Time now for our rants and raves. Dan, you're up. I have a rant for Bloomberg Law, uh, which is an arm of Bloomberg. Uh, They have a website that did a story uh, reporting that a Department of Labor uh, uh, official named Leif Olson had posted anti-Semitic content on Facebook. And uh, Olson protested that it was sarcastic, but he resigned anyway. Uh, it was so obviously sarcastic that it, in- that it included things like this. Neocons are all Upper East Side Zionists who don't golf on Saturday, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, one of his commenters said it was epic car- sarcasm. So anyway, the, here's where the rant comes in. He resigned The Department of Labor soon realized that this really was sarcasm. He was making fun of anti-Semites. So he was reinstated. Uh, Bloomberg has issued kind of a grudging correction. They haven't apologized. And Brian Stelter of CNN has reported that Bloomberg is telling its reporters not to tweet out the follow-up that they did reporting that this guy had been reinstated. Absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, but it was stupid. And you can't... the, the tweet machine is I mean, trying to be funny and sarcastic and ironic. Oh, well, sarcasm fails. never works. That's, well, that's yeah. the it never point. works. And we know, no. it's like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, satire has become a victim once again yeah, of a politically exactly. correct <laughs> environment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Adam. Uh, I'm going to, uh, just to echo Kelly here, I'm going to talk bad about Jeff Bezos. I want to <laughs> rave. I, I, I want to rave for two pieces that just ran in ProPublica and BuzzFeed. They both, uh, right around the same time, took really damning looks, big investigative mm. pieces on the way Amazon, uh, Jeff Bezos' company, has, has gotten us all used to the idea of getting the things we order the next day. Uh, I, uh, by the way, by way of disclosure, I am a paying prime customer. But reading these pieces, I felt really bad about being one. That Both pieces made it clear that Amazon has created this network of same-day delivery systems that they exercise complete control over, but they do it with subcontractors. So if anything goes wrong, if one of the people driving the trucks Hits, uh, hits a car, kills, kills a kid, somebody. kills an older person, they're able to say, no, 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 that's the, you know, don't try yeah. to hold us legally liable. That's on these uh, subcontractors mm-hmm. we work with. Both really damning pieces. Yeah, good, Everyone who uh, pays to get stuff from Amazon, and again, I do it, uh, it's an uncomfortable read, but it is something to think about the next time you click that order button. All right, Kelly. Um, so I have a rave for Rotten Tomatoes. People may know Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> yeah. as the uh, aggregation site, the American aggregation site for film and television. And what they do is bring together all of these reviews by various critics. In the past, you could only be one of their aggregators if you came from kind of a traditional organization like, say, a GBH or a you know, New York Times or whatever. And then as you know, other things have expanded in media, they expanded their roster, but not who the critics were, the body of the critics. So now they've taken several big steps. They've added 600 new film commentators, um, and they're very diverse, and they've uh, uh, put money into making certain that uh, people with different perspectives, critics with different perspectives, get to the film screenings, uh, have access to you know stars and artists that they normally would be shut out of because they don't come from the New York Times. And what that has meant is, uh, what that will continue to mean is that you get a, a fuller understanding and, and response mm-hmm. about the critique of any film or Great. television. A more accurate tomato meter. More accurate, more <laughs> right? accurate tomato. Yeah, exactly. It's fresh if it's uh, over a 60% positive. <laughs> exactly, yeah. uh, <laughs> Great site. Yeah. Uh, I have a rave for Joe Biden, the uh, presidential uh. candidate. Uh, and you may have seen this, his response to uh, Stephen, Stephen Colbert's question about his many gaffes and, and about being nuts. Take a look. In the last few weeks, you've confused New Hampshire for Vermont, said Bobby Kennedy and MLK were assassinated in the late 70s, assured us, I'm not going nuts. (laughs) Follow-up question, are you going nuts? Look, the reason I came on the Jimmy Kimmel show is because I'm I'm, I'm not. So, of course, it wasn't the Jimmy Kimmel show. It was the Stephen Colbert show, and it may have been pre-planned, um, but he delivered it well. Every Timing is everything in comedy, and he did it well. The front runner, I think, took good advantage of a late-night comedy appearance opportunity. Do you think Colbert was in on it? Uh, may have been. His staff may have fed him the, the line, or he could have anticipated that being the type of question he would be asked, and he had that line ready to go. Yeah. All right, well, I have uh, a rave tonight for a freelance writer named Howard Scott. So here's the story. Uh, last week, he was reading a story in the uh, Boston Globe about a, um, a high-tech guy from Waltham named uh, Praveen Tipperary, I think it is. Anyway, he sees this cartoon that's 
because this guy does cartoons on the side. This is the cartoon. And he's, you know, a scientist and a business guy standing next to a blackboard. Close enough, from here on in, it's who you know. And this guy, Howard Scott, says, hey, you know, I think I've seen something like that before. This guy's a big cartoon collector. He goes to his cartoon collection. Sure enough, he finds one from the New Yorker. It's the exact same order, almost the exact same images, as a matter of fact. Um, this is close enough. From here on out, it's here, you know. Now you look at these two side by side. So Howard sent the photos, the, the two cartoons, to the Globe, and the Globe did a follow-up piece. But this is out-and-out -out plagiarism. Yeah. This guy, um, Praveen Tipperene, says, oh, well, I'll have to be more careful in the future. Careful in the future? <laughs> I mean, this is out-and-out out plagiarism. Careful when you steal things? Take them like my, like my yeah. own? Is it, wasn't this, is, aren't these cartoons he just draws for the hell of it on his own? Yes. I mean, he wasn't yeah. giving anyone this. I thought no. the Globe piece was sort of overkill. Like, so the guy likes to draw no, cartoons. No, 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 but so the he, Globe used that cartoon in its profile. Well, that's so, that's worth. Yeah. So they that's printed worth it. Out yeah, like yeah. So so you're right. He just sends them around to people in the science community, but then it made the paper when he was profiled for doing cartoons. That it's is a great so, little. It yeah. is. Yeah, that, that is, is so 